Amen. Number two, be transgenerational. Second Timothy chapter two, verse two. Second Timothy chapter two, verse two. The twenty-first century believers, for them to make impact in this end time, must be transgenerational. Somebody say transgenerational. Say it again. Say it as if you mean it. Shout it louder. Yes, sir. You must be transgenerational. You must consider other generations. Bring it. Look at this. And the things that thou had heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Be transgenerational. So if in the local church we are asking how many people will be teachers in the church, you should immediately say, here I am. You can't be in the church for 10 years and God is still looking for teachers in the church. It is a kingdom criminality. It is a kingdom crime. Having gone to church, receiving from a source, receiving from your pastor, receiving from your prophet for years and you could not transfer the same knowledge to another person is criminality. So God is not raising prayer collecting believers. God is raising a kind of believers that are transgenerational. What they receive, they transfer to another. What they receive, they transfer to others. That's the kind of believers that will make impact in this end time. There are people I will not be able to reach. When you come here, I teach you. You do what? You reach them. There are people I will not be able to meet. When you meet me, I teach you. You go and teach them. That is the system. Are you learning something? So from today, make sure there is somebody that you are discipling. Make sure you disciple somebody. Make sure there is somebody you are teaching the gospel. You come to service, you learn few things, you go out there, teach it to somebody. In, the, in your local church, have a group. You can be assigned a group that you will be discipling. New people will be coming to church. Do you think that, that, that as people begin to enter church, few people will be able to disciple them? No. You that have been here for a long time, you have received so much from me, then you need to teach others. As they are coming, we'll give you a group to go and disciple. And then the kingdom of God will be expanded. Why not celebrate Jesus? <clears throat> Number three. Number three. The kind of believers that will make impact in this 21st century must be ready to learn must be ready to do what to learn must be ready to learn let's see luke chapter 2 verse 46 and it came to pass that after three days they found him who was in him they found jesus where in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors both hearing them and asking the word patience did you see jesus don't be a believer that is saying, do it for me, do it for me, do it for me. Become a believer that is ready to learn. Even Jesus learned. Look at it. Jesus was found in the temple with doctors. Who were the doctors? Men who had knowledge. So even Jesus learned from men. So even Jesus had mentors who mentored him, who taught him. Jesus learned from men. Okay, let's proceed. Why did he learn? Let's see. Verse 47. Let's read one to go. And all that had him, we are what? Astonished at his words. Understanding and answers. Why? Because he learned. Bring, bring this verse with new living. All who had him, we are what? Amazed at his understanding and his words answers because he he empowered himself with knowledge he learns from 
people who had knowledge. The 21st century believers will make impact when they had land. A believer who is ignorant of the word of God, who doesn't know anything, will not do much. Praise God. Am I talking to somebody? Believers who are ignorant of the word of God, who don't know what God wants from them, are not going to do anything. They will not do much. So, the 21st century believers must be imparted with knowledge. You must have knowledge. Because you can only give what you have. You cannot give what you don't have. You can't teach what you don't know. You can only teach what you know. And you can only know when you have learned. You cannot know when you have not learned. You must make up your mind and have passion for knowledge. You must have passion for knowledge. Don't be a believer who doesn't want to learn anything. Look at this. Look at verse 48. He says, His parents did not know what to think. So, his mother said to him, Why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been what? Frantic. Searching for you everywhere. What was the reply of Jesus? 49. Want to go? Why did you need to search? He asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Bring this verse with King James. He didn't say I will be in the Biabalo. In the house of God. Doing the assignment of the father. That was why he has to learn. Bring. Now look at it. It's called kingdom business. You think that God is not a businessman. God is a businessman. Touch your neighbor say God is a businessman. If God is not a businessman, he wouldn't have invested in your life. God is an investor and he demands return on investment. I'm talking on finance now. God had invested so much in us and is expecting return. <laughs> Bring it with, okay, look at this. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? With you not that I must be about my father's business. So Jesus knew that he must do his father's business. He has to go and learn in order to be able to do his father's business. Can I hear a better amen? I said, can I hear a better? Amen. Amen. Let me give you the last one, then we'll close. The 21st century church or the 21st century believers must be believers who are influential. Somebody say influential. influential. Talk to me lively, influential. influential. Yes, we must be global influencers. We must influence the world. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 and 14. So bring it. Matthew chapter 5. Thank you. Look at this. Look at the scripture that shows us that we are kingdom and the global influencers. Let's read it one to go. You are the what? The salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its test, its strength, its quality, how can his saltness be restored? It is not good for anything any longer, but to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men. That shall never be your portion. He says, if the salt has lost its test, it's useless. How can a believer be in a territory? That territory is not feeling the impact of that believer. Wave your hand. Wave it. Wave it. You are a believer in the campus and your, your school is not feeling your impact as a believer. Ah! If that is what the scripture is telling us. That why people need salt is because it gives food tests. Am I talking? But if the saltness has, has gone, it has, it has lost capacity, it has lost value. It says it is useless. It will only be thrown off, thrown out, and it will be matched by foot of men. That's what happened to a believer who entered university. And the person goes there and enters secret courts. As 
as a youth you enter higher institution the person now begin to do wrongs as a believer he entered university you are not in the class you are not learning. the person is not learning and you are not even preaching in your campus is from one location to another location from one location to another location that is not the kingdom influence we are talking about it, what we are talking is that I enter university as a lady I will even help to open campus fellowship I enter university as a young man I will help to open campus fellowship in my school and begin to teach people just like what we learned that we must be transgenerational Paul said to Timothy all that you have learned from me teach the, the same to trustworthy people who will be in position to teach others now you have come to local church and you have gotten admission and now what it means that when you enter into the higher institution what you have learned from the local church you should go there and reproduce it I thought you would have said amen That is what is called ministry reproduction. You reproduce. You reproduce. What you have learned, you teach others. Reproduction. Why you see people all over the world is because of the power of reproduction. It was only Adam that God created miraculously. Every other being, every other human being on this earth came as a result of reproduction. So this is the kind of believers God is raising in this 21st century uh, season or dispensation that will make a lasting impact. Praise God somebody. That will make a lasting impact. Hallelujah. Am I teaching here? So influence. The verse 14 says we are light of the world. We are city set upon the hills. He goes pari pasu with being a salt. He said, you are the light of the world. A city set on, on a hill cannot be influenced. Somebody say influence. Anywhere you are, make sure that there is, there is influence. Make sure that Christ dominates that territory. In your office, make sure that Christ is the, is the ruler. Bring the, uh, the government of Christ into anywhere you are. Don't compromise. Come on. You are a kingdom influencer. Don't compromise. If the light compromises, darkness will overshadow it. Light does not compromise her brightness. Anywhere light enters, the light will take over. Light will influence darkness. That's what we are talking about. You are the light set upon the hills. Anywhere you find yourself, you must, you must influence. You must bring the authority and the government of Christ into that area. Light must shine in that area. In your family, light must shine. What about your brothers and sisters who are not born again? And you only, you are the only one born again in the family. Don't you know that you'll be having problems? Because the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. We don't have the same mindset. Why you continue struggling in that family is because they are unbelievers. Your reasoning are not this. Oh, somebody is not hearing this. <laughs> 